And welcome to Far North Tactical's Saturday morning wake-up call right here on KFAR. We are a local talk radio in Fairbanks, Alaska, but we are streaming live around the world at KFAR660.com. And you are welcome to share that web address with as many people as you know. The shows are also posted on the website, which is patriotslament.blogspot.com. And now, joining us in the studio, the people who actually make the show here from Far North Tactical, it's Aaron Bennett. Good morning, Aaron. Good morning. Say that again. Good morning, Steve. There we go. We got you. And from Bighorn Enterprises, we have Josh Bennett. Good morning, Josh. Good morning, Steve. All right. Gentlemen, take it away. Getting geared up here. (laughs) <laughs> I just walked in. That's like, that's like walking into a moose hunt with your gun still in your truck. I don't do those things, Steve. That's too important. <laughs> <laughs> okay, wow. I was going to... Did you have something to start off with there? Or did you want to talk about Brandon... Is it Rob? Rube? The Marine? The Facebook guy? Yeah. Oh, the, the one who was uh, taken off to the psychological hospital because he posted something critical... Actually, it wasn't even critical of the president. He just posted something that they didn't agree with politically on his Facebook page. So they came and picked him up and took him to a psychological hospital. Right. He is uh, was actually listening to his lawyer. His lawyer did an interview with uh, Lou Rockwell. And um, his lawyer said that actually his brother was the one that made the comments that they arrested this guy for so they have this uh private chat chat room on facebook it was just between him his brother and his sister and they i don't know what the comments actually were and uh he's a decorated vet from afghanistan i believe the comments were the revolution has already begun count me in okay (laughs) well that's pretty inflammatory so he's a veteran of uh, iraq and afghanistan and apparently they came and uh to his house he went outside because he saw him coming and spoke with him for a little bit and they just handcuffed him and hauled him off asked him what charges he was being held on and there are none he's not being charged with anything he wasn't being i believe he's out right this minute Yes, he he was released yes but he did go they took him to a psychiatric hospital was really interesting i mean to give him his you know his, his psych evaluations whatever this guy, his lawyer, actually took the case after talking to him, and one of the biggest reasons he, he looked into it, and he found out that in Virginia alone, 20,000 people a year are hauled off to psych wards and evaluated. Civil psych wards. I mean, they're not like military or whatever. So that disturbed him a little bit. And... Uh, I think Aaron was saying that Glenn Beck had said something about that, Glenn too. Glenn Beck said he was going to have the uh, Blaze go out and look into it because they had heard that it was around 20000 a year. In just in He's from Virginia, right? Right. Just in Virginia alone that the FBI takes to jail, has taken to jail in the past. No, well, psych wards. Well, whatever. Call it what you want. Right. But, the, well, there is a difference because... If, you don't, if you're crazy, you don't need... Defense lawyers, what you need is medication. Right. I think that I think Glenn Beck said that they're specifically talking about people that they took to jail for things that they put on Facebook, not not just like oh this guy needs to go to a psych ward. They think that they're talking specifically Facebook related. That that wasn't necessarily yeah. When I listened to the interview, it didn't necessarily say exactly. I'm telling you what Glenn Beck said. Sure. Obviously, the lawyer probably knows a little more. Well. It's, Either way, it should be somewhat a little bit disturbing to find out that, I mean, of course we know that they survey, there's surveillance for everything you do, your texts, your phone calls, your Facebook tweets. I posted a deal on the website here several months back where some guy, what, what, I mean, it was pretty pathetic. He tweeted something and he got hauled off to jail for a tweet. It wasn't a, uh physical threat or anything it was just something they didn't like so they hauled him off so i remember that he actually was complaining about the airlines and was uh complaining about the way in which the tsa was manhandling him okay he tweeted about it and off to jail mm-hmm. off to jail no the greatest thing about it is that there's no charges most of these people are never charged just like this brandon guy no charges at all you just haul off to jail mike anderson comes to my mind 
You guys probably remember that pretty well. I do. They hauled him off to jail, and it was never, first of all, they didn't have a warrant, and then they never charged him with anything. He just, basically, I guess you're an enemy combatant, or... Hey, but don't we institute government in the first place as an entity of protection? I mean, as a people, as a society, we want, we create governments from the very beginning as protection, so... The more protective that they get, isn't that just them um, getting more efficient to the ends that we created them for? Good point. I mean, how can we complain about them getting better and better and better at the job that we instituted them for in the first place? We're not sitting there saying that we're capable or willing to take responsibility and protection for ourselves and our families. We create government to do that for us. And then we cry, uh, cry out when they when they become more than we want them to. I mean, it's like they, you kind of see in the Bible there when you read that we read that right last week. Yeah, you know, last mm-hmm. week, and God kind of predicted that one, didn't He? Like you, you want this, you want this um, structure, so you can be more lax, and here's what you'll get. Well, I mean, yeah, and take we can take this radio show for the last year and a half as a really good example. People call in here when we say, basically, we would prefer to have a stateless society, that people call in and say, well, you'd have to have some kind of government and leaders. And I mean, people call in and literally they admit it's theft, but we need a little bit. Why? And the overwhelming thing is, well, who would protect us? Who would protect us? That's the overwhelming theme is, well, we need them to protect us. So like Aaron just pointed out, we've got the ultimate protection. Yeah, and I don't I don't see how one how a person can come on here and say that we have to have government and then keep if you keep breaking it down and breaking it down it, they'll they'll definitely flat out say that they don't want a world government. When well, that would be the ultimate form of government. I mean, the where, where do you protection. where do you I guess the lines drawn to limited government, right? That's what you keep hearing from the republicrats. Right, that's what we have now actually is limited government because we have a constitutional democracy that this is actually everything that i wanted to talk about so (laughs) so are we done then no no (laughs) no where i wanted to take that was um the idea of um small government limited government you know in the idea of voting and we've went down those roads a million times but the core of the problem in my opinion comes down to law so all through time, people have had an understanding of of what law is. I mean, if me and if Luke and I, uh, which by the way, Luke Love Joyce here in the studio with me, if him and I were, um, that's just to make sure you get arrested. Right, exactly. <laughs> Two, if we this is 2,000 years <laughs> ago, or <laughs> okay, if this was 6,000, 7,000 years ago, and Luke and I were in a cave, we would already have. If we were in a cave together, or if he was in a cave and I was outside, we would already have a common between us idea of what property rights and human rights were. I mean, obviously, if I was to come into him violently and take what's his, he would already know that that's wrong. Nobody needed to tell him that, right? I hope so. Right. You would. We already know that. By, and By the way, Luke is nodding, yes. Uh, just, if you're, you're on radio here, Luke, so you have to do, have vocal response. He's not real smart, but he knows that that <laughs> wouldn't be right. <laughs> so... Well, I guess what I'm trying to say is the only time that me, that Luke and I could ever have a problem is if we were occupying the same space. So if I was to move into the cave with him, in our physically we tried to occupy the same space. That's the only way that we could ever physically have a problem unless we were coming against each other violently for other reasons, right? Anybody, be, anybody with a family, you, you you get married, you have kids, you know exactly what that's like. You're trying to occupy the same space. Well, Especially right. if you only have one bathroom. But I mean, you know, at, at some point you have to understand <laughs> that this is, you know, we're going to have this shared property here. We're going to have to treat it in, in a way in which we all have mutual respect for each other. Right. Either well, that or else we lay down the law. Look, that's my bathroom. <laughs> You're using that bathroom with my permission. I, I probably should have used the island as an analogy. Okay. It would have been a better one. So if Luke and I were both on an island and I was on one side and he was on the other, we would never have any conflict of any kind. It wouldn't be possible for us to have any conflict unless I was just a total jerk and I wanted to fight him, right? So the only way we could have a problem is if on his side, he his appropriation of his side that he built up, made himself a shelter and those things, if I went and tried to occupy his original appropriation, he would know that his labor and his time and his effort that he put into his shelter automatically makes it his, right? Mm-hmm. 
It, through the original appropriation, it became his property. So the only way we could have a problem is if I tried to possess it. So everybody understands the basics of of what law is. I mean, it's 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 built into all of us. So if you take it from a, a elementary level, if a bunch of kids are on a playground and they're playing tag, and it's, and they elect a an entity above them to decide what the rules were in that game and those rules could change at all times it would never be a fair game of tag right the people in charge would always win Calvin ball <laughs> yeah. so that, right wouldn't the, it wouldn't the, the, all the other kids on the playground immediately recognize that that would be an unfair game and nobody would even want to play it right right so I guess my question would be would would they want to play it if that process of becoming the hierarchy to be the rule decider in the game of tag was open to free election and any one of those kids could run for it. Absolutely, because then I have a chance to make the rules next time, right? Right. Especially if there was a limit on each week which kid, if a kid already served a term, if he couldn't be in that position anymore. Would they all play the game? (laughs) And and they would go out there and they'd yell at the kids who weren't playing the game and say, hey... So I guess what I'm trying to say is in an adult term, that would be you would have to – you would immediately recognize that there's no justice in that game, right? Because the the rules or in an adult term, the laws are fluid. So in the system that we're in today, we don't have any set law of any kind because we elect officials and their only job is to do what? Make Make laws. laws. To make laws. So they create laws. They don't interpret what is law. They don't lay down what is already commonly known to everybody as laws. They go in and they're elected to create laws, and they create laws fitting to the party that they were elected in by. Right? You have Obamacare. They want to vote it in Mitt Romney to put in Mitt Romney care. And we go on for days and days and days about whose laws are going to go into effect to affect. Basically, each set of people goes into a vote laws against the other sides when it comes down to it. At least that's how the other side takes it, right? Well, this side's going into voting gay marriage. This side's going into vote out gay marriage. Right. We get that all the time. Well, if you don't go vote in your guy, then the other guy is going to vote in his guy, and he's going to pass the law against you. We and need to get our guy in there to pass the law against him. And then by not voting, what you're doing is you're helping to elect the other guy. <laughs> yeah. I'm helping to elect both of them. All right. So, can, I, can I help to elect neither one of them? <laughs> I just, I, the thing, the fundamental of the whole thing that bothers me about voting and about our system in general isn't whether voting works. Of course it works. That's the problem. <laughs> it works great. People get voted in to create law. And if I don't understand how anyone can wrap their, can't wrap their mind around the fact that if you can create law, then there is no justice of any kind. And you see in every aspect of your life, there's no justice. And I don't, do we even need to go on about um, when the state sets itself up to not only um, – when the same entity sets itself up to be the creator of law, they also get to tax you and decide how much they're going to charge you to enforce those laws? How much justice can there be in that? See, it seems to me I remember one of the quotes from the fo- the founders saying something about what a great injustice it would be when somebody is being forced to pay for something that they personally find repulsive. Here's the best part. Switch back to the playground really quick. So if all the other kids decided that they were disgruntled with what was going on and they pled their case to the hierarchy, the kids that were in the official spots. But there was nobody for that. They couldn't go to the principal. They couldn't go to the teacher. There's no higher um, entity than the kids in charge. There wouldn't be any justice in that, right? So basically, if you're at my house, if Steve comes over to my house and I make all the rules and I charge him to be there because I'm protecting him, and I decide how much I'm going to charge him to protect him and how much I'm going to protect him. Take my milk money. Take my lunch money away from me. Any violation that happens against him, he has to appeal to me. So any transgression I put on Steve, he has to appeal to me to decide whether I transgressed against him or not. How easy is it for us to see that there's not going to be any justice there? I'm always going to decide in my favor. And if someone else transgresses against Steve while he's at your house, you're not liable for it, even though you're charging him for protection. 
Yes. Uh. <laughs> it gets better and better. You know, you know, it's funny that you should use that as an, as an example, Aaron, because I, this may come as a surprise to everyone. But when I was a kid, you're moving in. <laughs> uh, I was no. When I was a kid, I was picked on in the uh, the public schools and uh, all the way through. And part of it had to do with the fact that I um, I was smarter than everybody else, and I made sure that they knew it. Uh, and <laughs> I did not exactly endear myself to anyone. But I, I was a bit of a nerd. I was a bit of a um, overweight. Not very athletic. I got picked on. I got punched. I got uh, whatever. I was in the same situation that you just described. I could not appeal to anyone else apart from the kids who were bullying me. And what I ended up doing was basically uh, taking things into my own hands. And uh, first I tried evading them. I ran away. That didn't work. They caught up to me. Then I tried just simply... uh, not going out there to recess at all. They still managed the next time I find the kids. You have to go out to the bathroom at some point. They, they would find me. Uh, at one point, what I decided to do is I would run, let them chase me, get right up behind me, and then I would drop down into a ball and let them trip over me. Eventually, they stopped chasing me. If I, and I don't know if that has an, an example into the real world in terms of uh, tripping up the government that is trying to... <laughs> uh, it's impossible to trip up a government that we all legitimize every single day by voting. We all demand to have this hierarchy above us. I mean, but it seems like we can resist, though, can't we? I mean, isn't there a way that we can resist without? You can't even resist on Facebook. Yeah, that just was proven again and again and again and again. I mean, there's when no he, when resistance. I mean, they get to change. The point is, they make the law. They change the law. I mean, we have this uh, Fourth Amendment deal. I mean, Frank Turney calls every show, and I applaud him for it, to have a right to a jury and the due process and all these things. Well, they've changed the, changed the rules again. Now you don't have that right. We can uh, detain you. I mean, we talked about the NDAA way before... It was ever talked about anywhere. Mm-hmm. Really, we did. Mm-hmm. And people calling like, <laughs> you guys, that'll never happen. You guys are stupid. They're, they'll never do that. And by golly, if they do do that, it's probably a good reason. And they would never detain Americans. They're doing it every single stinking day. Thousands of people. We saw it right here in Fairbanks with Mike Anderson was never charged with anything. And he sat in jail for a week. That's being... Well, it's violated, but you're, that was being detained. Yeah, but he wasn't and, arrested, Josh. He was only detained. Right. It's funny, the play on words. To me, when you get hauled off somewhere, whether if you don't want to be there, whether they call it detention, <coughs> arrest, commitment to a mental kidnapping, facility. whatever you want to call it, it's all the same. We thing. allow it because the state does it. If I was to go into Luke's side of the island and forcibly remove him of, from his... Um, originally appropriated property and take him over to mine in chains, everyone would think that I did a little bit more than detained him. Detain him would be to stop by and talk to him when he's trying to work. <laughs> it's like, uh, you're detaining me. Can you leave now? <laughs> it's You just mentioned that it, we allow it because the government is doing it instead of us, but then we come back to the just on the one hand, yeah, but then we also turn around and say, well, we are the government. All right, we, that, we have that's the power. how we lend it legitimacy. I mean, if you don't like it, vote in somebody who will change it, Aaron. How, how often does that work? When is the last time you heard of a law being well, how, repealed? How can it possibly work when each side's voted in to create law? How are you the government if you can't go over there and grab one of the borough vehicles and take off in it and use it? That's you are not the government. That's the biggest fallacy, and you hear it every day. Well... Maybe not every day, but too many times a week. Well, we are the government. The government's there for us. No, it's not. Go grab one of the state road graders and go plow your road. You'll get arrested because it's not yours. That actually, that actually happened right down in, uh, what was it, Kodiak? A couple of months ago, Uzinki. fellow went out and uh, used a vehicle, one of the state vehicles, and got it stuck in a ditch. So he went back and got one of the state uh, bulldozers. To come and move that first truck that he got stuck. He got that stuck in the ditch, too, and then he got arrested and he'd been charged with uh, theft. Theft. But isn't he the government? Well, he was trying to do the right thing and get the, the first truck unstuck. You know, it's not his fault that he was drunk. 
Well, maybe <laughs> maybe it is. <laughs> right. Point being, though, he's not the government. You are we. Anyone listening, you're not the government. Even uh, even people in government are not the government. They have the free use of the facilities, but they don't actually own it. So no one does. What I'm getting from you is that really what we have more is like a system of nobles. We have the, the people who are, you know, they get the free use of all of the things that we pay for. Nobles own things, though. Yeah, We're yeah, in absolutely. a unique situation where the, actually, the people that go, that are in government, don't own the property that they have the free use to use. Which is kind of funny, because if you really think about it, if you don't own it, but you have the right to use it... For a limited amount of time. For a limited amount of time, how good a care are you going to take of it? You're not. Look at how great a care we have taken of our public parks. Yeah, but jo- Josh is specifically talking about the appropriation of other people's property, mm-hmm. the appropriation of of the facility in the first place that you get the power to go use, and basically your your limited opportunity to lord over other people. How how big how great of a caretaker are you going to be if you have no vested interest in that? And nobles they had fiefdoms, right? Mm-hmm. And you had nobles rising up against kings all the time to protect what was theirs. So I, I don't think that we can use nobles as a comparison to what's going on now. It's very unique in the fact that Luke here could go tomorrow and it ended up being the mayor of um, the borough. And he's going to have a very limited amount of time to get uh, Josh some contracts up north to line his pockets. Is that, are you running for me? gas line? Damn. I mean, I heard something about gas line. There's going to be some trucking. Uh, remember us. We'll vote for you. <laughs> All right. I, I know you. I know you're joking around a little bit, but that stings because that's the that's exactly the kind of thing you're hearing right now in the in the political advertising. Basically, is vote for me and I will get you jobs. You're hearing that over and over and over again. Yeah, and how how are they going to create those jobs? By political, stealing. well, they're stealing. just they're going to pass a law by stealing, mm-hmm. by stealing, steal from me and give it to your buddies. Huh. That's going down a different rabbit hole, though. Oh, it's, Let's it's, take some, it's related. We've we'll got take some calls. We've about three minutes here before the news at the bottom of the hour. Good morning, we start caller. Thinking, then we go blank. Well, welcome to know. the welcome to the wake up call. Who's this? Did you, do you guys like people? You want people to participate in your uh, in your with your uh, topics because you know I, I don't mind sitting on the phone, but I think the longer I wait, the more they'll tag me on this phone from listening to you talking on the radio. <laughs> but anyway, uh, the, about your uh, the first part of the show, you opened up with that guy, uh, the military guy. And the thing is, is that it, I do believe in, and tell me that I'm wrong, is one of the questions on your application for applying for a firearm is, have you ever been evaluated for psychiatric or have you ever been in a psychiatric facility? So that that right there, uh, if you have, you have to put it down there and they'll know. And that loses your uh, your Second Amendment right, so that uh, even if you go and you uh, for PTSD, if you uh, go for uh, PTSD and you're in the military, you automatically use you lose your gun rights because then you're considered uh, uh, psychiatric. Then you are considered to have a psychiatric problem, and that's how they're getting our gun rights right now is that they'll come get you, just like me, you know, they might now, because I've been waiting on this phone for almost a half an hour, it might tag my phone, they might come after me and just evaluate me, and therefore I just lost my uh, my gun rights because uh, they evaluated me. That's a pretty so good point. I didn't... Uh... You, need to, uh, you need to inform people of this, and... Uh, uh, I'm John Fonda, by the way. Remember Jane Fonda? Well, I'm John Fonda. You can uh, let people know what's going on, because that's what's going on uh, uh, right now. That's how they're getting it done right. Yeah, so, interesting point. I hadn't even thought uh, about that. I need to get off the phone now, but please, next time, 
I wouldn't mind calling in, but you have to be quicker to pick up the phone or else they might tag me. Well, we usually like to blab when we first well, start. Keep, keep in mind that they cannot actually tag your phone until you actually hear that click and we put you on there. We have a special protection device here at the station that keeps you from being tagged. <laughs> Coming up on the Fox News here at the bottom of the hour, you've got it on Far North Tactical Saturday morning wake-up call on 660 AM. And welcome back to the uh, Saturday morning wake-up call right here on a local talk radio 660 on your AM dial. Joining us in the studio this morning from uh, Bighorn Enterprises, we've got Josh Bennett. Good morning, Josh. Good morning, Steve. From Far North Tactical, we've got Aaron Bennett. Good morning, Aaron. Good morning, Steve. And we've got in the background there uh, Luke. What's your last name again, Luke? Lovejoy. Luke Lovejoy. All right. Well, the, all, all Cannon those in... fodder. That last name makes me happy. <laughs> <laughs> and good morning, Steve. Good morning, Luke. I'm Steve Floyd, and of course I am uh, the monkey behind the machine here. We've got three lines on hold. Uh, and remember, we do have a special protection device that keeps anyone from tracking you until you actually hear the click and go live on the air. You guys want to go to the phones? Yeah. 458 Talk is the number. Good morning, caller. Welcome to the set. Okay, we've lost them all. Nice. Oh, okay. Favorite kind of calls. <laughs> <laughs> bing, bing, bing. Hey, and Luke, call We must have answered everyone's question. Or or disturbed them enough that they didn't want to stick on the phone. <laughs> yeah, because of Bill's call. Good job, Bill. Now no one's going to call. I think they're going to get tagged. <laughs> Well, yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, if, if you ever think about it in terms of just the surveillance aspect alone, how hard it is for them to find somebody who actually has done something wrong in that surveillance aspect. I mean, like the, the vandals that, that tore up the flowers downtown, there's cameras all over the place. And yet when Frank Turney went down and asked them, hey, you've got all that footage. Can't you see who did the vandals? They're like, yeah, unfortunately, the, the light's just not good enough. We can't identify anybody down there messing with the flowers. So for all of the worry that there is about somebody seeing you on the the surveillance cameras that are everywhere, unless you stop and get right up in front of the camera and smile at it, it's going to be pretty hard for them to actually prove that it's you. Right? It's just yeah, but I don't think they need to even prove it's you anymore. You just come arrest someone. I mean, pick a random person that you don't like anymore and go haul them off and charge them with vandalizing the flowers. No, they don't need to do they that. They don't even they need to just, charge you. Yes, just haul you off. and. Uh, I think it was Luke. <laughs> Luke. I like flowers. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to pick some for my... Life. It was pretty pathetic someone did that, but whatever. I'm not, I definitely wouldn't pay for a radio program to talk about flowers. Unless it was Mr. Flowers. <laughs> You have to have it. Well, Steve already spent a long time talking about flowers on his show. On oh yeah, we're done. Uh, we're done with flowers. <laughs> let's let's move on. Oh uh, well, let's take him then. Four five eight talk is the so number. So he doesn't get tagged. Good morning, caller. Who's this? Hey, this is Joe Billy. Joe Billy, what's on your mind? You're tagged. <laughs> we already know you're a tagged. Long time ago. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Isn't it? And they haven't arrested me. I've had another week where I've gone out and done blatantly evil business. And they never seem to bother me anymore. And that doesn't mean they never will. You're, they may. You do it. My, we're losing. My things are. No, it's not just you. I think we've yeah. lo- we've lost. We're losing your signal a while, Billy. Oh, you can't hear me very well. No, we got okay. We got you back now. Are you on a are you on a mobile phone? Yeah, the weather's a little bad. off a little bit. My question today is this: You say you've been paying for this show for a year and a half. I'm merely curious, and I'll take my answer off the air. I'm merely curious, what do you, what are you feeling like you are deriving out of this? What are you getting out of the money you're spending, and are you satisfied with that? I'll take my answer off the air. That's a, that is a very, Excellent. very good question. That's a very good question. I've uh, been evaluating that for the last uh, probably four weeks and been talking to Josh about it. And it's a twofold question, really. Um, spending money and what are you getting out of it? And... My contract for this show is like $1,400 a month, and for me, it's not um, financially feasible to keep doing it, so I've been thinking about stopping doing it. And then on the other hand, you have um, people going to jail for Facebook posts and things of that nature, and it makes you really uh, wonder if it is worth trying to spread a message of liberty uh, at, at your own peril is what it seems to come down to in the society we live in today. And you know, it, it seems like the way our government works, like 
tomorrow they could decide that Josh, since he has all these kids and he homeschools them and this and that, that he's some kind of cultist and all they have to do is lambast him a little bit in the paper. And the whole town would gladly get behind that. And then there goes another uh, liberty spreader, liberty lover down the annals of Psycho, and he's in jail for the rest of his life, and we all just kind of laugh it off. But the state gets rid of one more person that was opposed to their ideals of ultimate power. Do do you keep doing a radio show in light of the fact that... um, it seems like more and more you can go to jail for thought crimes and you go on a radio show and do nothing but put out your thoughts. I don't know. Is that wise? Um, I was actually going to make the announcement that today was my last show, but I hadn't got a chance to talk to Steve about it, so probably next week will be my last show after I come to terms with uh, the radio show here. But am I getting my money's worth? I think I got my money's worth in the fact that I got to put a message out there that's near and dear to my heart, and whether it did any good or not, I have no clue. I mean, it's just one guy's opinion, uh, one guy's look outlook on what he sees as the real problem. You know, we go back and forth about politics nonstop on the national level that they scream and yell and froth at the mouth toward each other, but it's the same thing day in and day out, and we kind of looked, tried to step back and see if there's a different root cause. I think we addressed that pretty well this morning, what Josh and I and Steve and, you know, your average guy that has that line of thinking sees as the root cause. It's a law problem, and there is no justice. But in light of the fact that there is no justice, do you keep doing a show like this? I I don't think it's necessarily wise. Hmm. Yeah, I've thought about the cost analysis. Whether it's worth it for the money I haven't really thought about that a whole lot, except for hmm. my goal is to to have people wake up, I guess. Maybe I'm not the, well, I know I'm not the smartest guy in the world. Maybe all of my ideas aren't the smartest ideas in the world. But I think if I can get one person, in the last year or so, one person's listened to us. And thought, eh, maybe we, maybe there is something better that we could do than this democracy that we live in. Maybe there is something better than stealing from my neighbor and pointing a gun at my neighbor and forcing my will on him. Maybe there's something better than government monopolies. Maybe there's something better than government force. Maybe there's something better than throwing people in cages for doing things that don't hurt anyone, but just or against what I believe. Maybe there should be a right to free speech. Maybe there's an ultimate right to free speech. Maybe there should be a right to keep and bear arms outside of your Second Amendment. Maybe I do have the right to... Well, I was going to say jury, but... Maybe I do have inalienable rights that are mine that aren't granted by a government and I should be I should have property rights. Maybe I should have ultimate property rights. What's mine is mine. It shouldn't be taken from me. I shouldn't be coerced to participate in something I think is evil. If one person comes around and thinks that in the last year, then to me this is worth it. One person. Because if we can change one mind, well that's one mind I guess it maybe can go help someone else. And I don't mean believe exactly like I do and if you don't then but if you can at least if there's been people that have come out of their box a little bit and looked around and like Israel said the other day step out of the darkness then yeah to me is worth it right seeing this seems like the biggest crutch is to see all of our liberties that we like to call them as privileges you know call up and say well if you get evaluated for psychiatric this and that then you lose your right to bear arms it's not a right you can't lose a right you you're self-admittedly saying it's a privilege your privilege is revoked they allow us to have guns in america they allow you your privilege is revoked to drive your privilege is revoked to hunt your privilege is revoked to build a building your privilege is revoked to do Everything. Think of everything that you require that they require a license for. If you have your your privilege is revoked revoked to be married. Yeah. Yeah. Your privilege is revoked to be a preacher. Your privilege is revoked to have a church. So yeah, we it does cost a lot of money, 
I mean, that hasn't been the point. And we it, well, we don't just come on here because we're being haughty and think we're the coolest. I mean, it might sound like that. Aaron thinks he's pretty cool. I we am. think we're the coolest people in the world, and we haven't come on here just to say, ah, oh, I know it's come up kind of where people say, well, they just get on there and blab their, you know, they don't listen to anyone. That hasn't been our intent. Our intent isn't come on here and just say, well, we got to buy this hour. Now we get to say whatever we want, even though we do get to say whatever we want. <laughs> but the intent has been sincerely, I mean, like inside our heart is to get people to change their minds about things, to get people to think, at least to think differently. Or at least, if you don't come all the way around to think differently, at least to think about it. At, at least, at least think to about think what we think about else thinking. Are, just to, at least at the bare minimum to think that everybody else around you is as deserving of liberty as you are, and it's worth fighting over. And I don't mean violently overthrowing anybody. I mean, but it's standing worth... standing up for it. It's worth the stand-up fight. It's worth... It's worth all of the veterans in town going and standing with the Occupy the Park people. I mean, it's worth it. It's worth standing against the state at every opportunity you get. And, you know, Josh says it's not about money, and it's it's not. And I've scraped as much as I could to keep it going for as long as I can. But for me, it's come down to I have to weigh the cost against the result. And, I, you know, I don't want to say, well... I'm too broke to keep doing the show, but that's kind of what it comes down to for me. I just I don't have fourteen hundred dollars a month to keep doing the show. Well, we've also talked about the what we started the show off with. You can be arrested for thought crimes now. Mm-hmm. And we've never advocated violence, and we've had people call and say, "Oh, we need a revolution," and we've actually shot that down. We need a revolution in the way that we need a thought revolution. Our, the the revolution has to be in our mind where right. we come we, about to say what Aaron said. Your liberty is worth it. My neighbor's liberty is worth it. It's worth it to have, instead of going down and voting for this uh, wood smoke initiative that's coming up, if we care about it so much, how come there's not 5,000 people standing in front of the borough building instead of going down and pushing a little button, begging? That's what you're doing when you vote. You're begging that they don't do something to you. Instead of that, why isn't there 5,000 people standing in front of the borough building saying... Hey, John Davies, we, you, you have two arms, two legs, two eyes, a nose, two ears, and a brain, just like everyone else does. You may think that you're smarter than everyone else, but you will not, you may not, enforce your opinion and your will on us. We will burn wood. If it's worth so much to us that we spend so much time, I'm just using this as a small example, we spend so much time every year. I've only been aware of it for like the last three years. Maybe it's only been a three-year problem. I don't know. But before, I didn't really care because I didn't totally out of politics. So the last three years, every year we go around, we get petitions, we sign, everyone gets in a hub bub, and we, people pay money for advertising. People fight both sides. They get in the newspaper, they get on the radio, they go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. If it's such a... If it's worth so much to us, instead of begging in a ballot box that you may lose. And if you lose, you are saying that you will, because you voted, you will go with whatever the outcome is. You have agreed to the outcome. If it's so important, why isn't there 5,000 people standing in front of the borough building saying, no, you can pass whatever law you want. We will burn wood. We live, and I don't want to get down to the, we live in Fairbanks, we do. No. It's our liberty I, I think the part of the issue here, though, Josh, is that the borough has already passed an ordinance that is going to go into effect that says that, that they are going to come around and fine you based on how opaque your smoke is. They're going to come around and tell you what you can or cannot burn in your stove or in your device or whatever. It's already on the books. Right. That's and, what and, I... and this upcoming ordinance, this, this ballot initiative, says you may not pass that, and it nullifies it. That, so that if right, if we don't say yes to that, then they have already restricted it. I know. That's what I'm saying. Instead of begging them through a ballot, because you're going to have to people voting the other way. you got two opinions banging their each other's heads. Isn't what that I'm all saying politics, is, though? Exactly. If it's so important to you to be able to heat your home, and it should be <laughs> fairly important, especially here when it's 50 below, 
instead of that, it's, yeah, these people are, are not bad mouths on the people that have got this initiative together at all. Good for them. Gather up all those people that signed your petition and stand in front of that borough building and let John Davies and those guys know. You almost said something. <laughs> Stick it. <laughs> Shove it. We're going to burn wood. I mean, we, we we all know that the wood issue, everyone knows you need to be burning dry wood, right? Everyone knows that. We're not stupid. We know that. Neighbors help each other out in those areas. I know people that are passing wood back and forth, and they help each other split it. They help this. They go, hey, where do you get your wood? Well, call someone. I went over and helped Josh split all his wood. <laughs> I gave Aaron my splitter, so I wouldn't have to help him. But <laughs> That's pretty much how it went down. <laughs> if it's so important, what I'm saying is... We have people that are just like us telling us what we can and can't do. If our liberty is so important, the point of this show, if it's so important, go stand over there in the building and say, no, you can't have this. You're not going to take my liberty away from me. But instead, we'll just vote and we'll go back and forth. The point of the show is to get people to finally come out of that and say, enough. I'm not going to be like this anymore. We'll not be a surf anymore. Is it important to you or not? I guess maybe that's... The point of the show. Is liberty important to you? Does your liberty important enough to stand up for it? And what is liberty? Is it going down and being able to have the civil duty and the responsibility to vote on a ballot box? It's a joke. I've never seen anywhere in our founding documents where it was a civil responsibility and duty to vote anywhere. I saw other things that the founders wrote about, like the jury box. But that's the one that people try to escape. The one that people are told by their founding fathers of this country is that the ballot box is the most important vote that you have. And people try to advocate that and say, no, I don't want to get on the jury. Yeah. I mean, I've heard several people. Yeah, I got a deal on there and I I was going to have to be on a jury, but I got out of it. And that same person will stick his nose in your face and say, you better vote. It's your civil duty to vote. Blah, blah, blah. No. And we're totally reversed. We're totally backwards. We're totally slaves. Welcome to the police state. Right, but you have to take personal responsibility if you're on a jury. And at the ballot box, we have a, we have a, mm-hmm. what do they call it when it's the private ballots? Yeah, the private ballots. Uh, the Romans were the first ones to introduce that. And which is funny is a lot of the founders saw that as one of their fundamental problems is they would vote, they would drop. Um, two different kinds of stones into two different kind of pots and so there was each person was anonymous and a lot of the founders saw that as one of their biggest shortcomings is there's no accountability for what they what they decided well it's kind of a stigma i mean think about it people don't it's kind of a stigma to go to someone and say who did you vote for mm-hmm. oh that's my private that was my private choice don't ask me to be responsible for what i did these guys have been on the right, but our road. politics goes so it's so vicious that you can be despised for who you vote for. I mean, which is why say, most people don't want to own up to who they vote right, for. Right. So let's say that um, I have a crowd of guys up the university I hang out with, and we all go out to eat together. And am I going to admit that I voted for Bush, or am I going to not just want to say anything at all because I know they all voted for Clinton? You, you know. And how how what would they look at me like if I did vote for Bush after everything that Bush did? You know, I mean, it's just because you're base because we're taking accountability for the person in office by the vote that we cast. And this is why you can't get those people to go out and stand in front of the borough building because there is accountability for that. People might see them doing that. People are going to recognize them for doing that. People are going to say, "Hey, you're one of those troublemakers." Right. But is and, it? I guess what yeah. I'm trying to say is that. Um, because we we want to have a private ballot and we don't want to have any accountability because we consider ourselves personally responsible for the people that we vote in, don't we? Otherwise, we wouldn't care. Yeah, you all. see the dump, bumper stickers say, "Don't blame me, I voted for whatever." Right. So and don't blame me, I didn't vote. Because it's, <laughs> it's personal accountability thing. We we consider ourselves responsible for the person that's in there. So when they do do things that are contrary to what we know is. Um, to we that we know is ethically right and ethically or moral, when they do things that are contrary to that, we still allow it and legitimize it because we feel in our hearts that we are the reason that they're there. 
The you same reason, the, the same thing. right, the same reason that we feel guilty is the same reason we legitimize everything that they do. You know that the person is going to fail, and eventually do something that's totally against you, and yet you're going to do it anyways. And then you tell yourself, "Well, no man is perfect. That's why I voted for him. No man is perfect. So quit voting for him. Quit voting for man. Just stand up for your liberties." Yeah, Luke. <laughs> Four hey. five, I'm getting the, the the signal from Josh to go to the phone. Oh, yeah. Four five eight, talk the number. Good morning, caller. Who's this? I'm sorry. This is Bill again. I didn't know that you guys needed money. Okay. I'm no. Sorry. We're, I, I, we're not. Wait a minute. Let me finish. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the thing is, is that I know you don't want people to think that you need money or whatever. That's not the point. The point is, is that we like the show. And I would like to contribute, but the problem, the, see, the way that Glenn Beck does it is he's got GBTV, which is very, very simple for me to remember in my mind before I, so I can get to my computer. I can go to GBTV and donate my $50 or my $100, whatever it is, for the year so I can listen and I can watch uh, Glenn Beck on my computer which I like listening and watching Glenn Beck on my computer. Now, Glenn Beck, he asked for donations, and it's and the reason why you ask for donations is because if you like what I say, if you like what I do, I would appreciate your contribution to keep me on the air. So, therefore, I would like to put a donation button on patriotlament.blogspot.org. But that's so hard to remember. Holy crap, how can you remember <laughs> uh, patriotlament.blogspot.org? I can't remember that. I'm so com. lucky I remembered that. I don't know how I remember that. Well, you that. didn't remember it. It's .com. <laughs> it's stuck in my head. That's how I remember it. I mean, for crying out loud, I've been listening for you for two years. Or as long as it's been. But I like listening to you, so now I'll go and if there's a donation button on there, I'll donate, you know, whatever I can to help you stay on the line. Now, the way that this works is to, to, to determine whether or not you're doing any good, whether or not you two are doing any good, let's just see how many people would donate to you to see if they were willing to keep you on the air to listen to you. Because I like listening to you, and I like uh, listening to uh, Steve, and uh, I like the fights with Randy and, and the, with uh, uh, what's her, Lisa. Lisa. And then, uh, you know, Frank, holy crap, I couldn't go through the day without Frank. And, you know, it's just, come on. If you need money, it's not, a, you know, it's not shameful. If people like listening to you, to ask for a donation, you know? So here's the, here, let's test it. Let's test to see how many people are out there listening. And, and Steve, you can bring this up on Friday. It would be better on Friday because people are still working on Friday and they're not off on Saturday and they're not sleeping till noon, usually. And, uh, well, unless they're a state employee, then they're... You know. And see how, if if we can get donation to keep uh, you guys on the air. Now, my suggestion would be to change it from, oh, let's see, what is it, patriotlament.blogspot.org to, um, I don't know, freedom, you know. The, the, freedom the issue is that the, blo the blog spot is a free hosting for a website. If you were to go and find another website, then you'd also have the added cost of another website domain name. We have tried some different domains and they've they're taken. But did you not a donate do you have a donate button on there? No. Let's try that. Let's try a donate well, we'll, button on We'll think your about website. it. I mean I appreciate your sentiment. I mean for sure that's pretty cool. Um I guess we'll have to I talk mean, about it. Part of it's not just the money though, it's uh it's also a time issue, and it's whether it's smart to be talking on the radio anymore. Well, that too, but I mean, you got to know whether or not somebody really likes you. I mean, <laughs> who else is gonna bail you out? Well, I, 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 I do, I do get out and about around town, and um, 
my fiance likes to joke that if I go to Fred Meyer's, it's going to be a three-hour ordeal because I'm going to be accosted all the way from the parking lot all the way back out. <laughs> so I, I definitely know people are listening. There's no doubt about that. But I don't know about uh, the fan base for sure. <laughs> uh, I think you got more than you realize. And, and I think uh, doing so, asking for a donation and seeing how much money comes in might just be your surprise. And go, wow, you know what? What I'm saying is really getting out there. And it's touching the hearts and minds of people. Because that's what we got to do. And we got to keep doing it. And we got to realize that the way that we built this country was not by government and not by one individual. It was by a group of people who pulled together to become a great nation. And, yeah, America, you know, we got kind of had a couple black guys, but I think, you know, in, in all in all, you know, we've paid back a lot more than, than any other country has ever given to America. Got that right. And I think, you know, if, if people would just remember, just it, it's a hard when, you, when the new kids in school don't get to be able to stand up in front of the, the, that flag and pledge allegiance because I was doing that the other day. You know, I was putting my hand on my heart and I go, dang, you remember how to pledge allegiance? And I'm going, well, let's see. I pledge allegiance to the flag for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Hey, I remember. I remember, man. And let's see, do I remember the Ten Commandments? No. I don't no, that. wow. <laughs> you know? There you go. Bill, thanks hey. for the call. We're up against the clock. If other people want to hang on, we'll All right. won't come. Gonna, we're we're going to hold people over. This is an almost unprecedented event. We, if you'd like to stay on hold, we will get to you in the second hour. Patriots, the men coming up right after the Fox News here on KFAR. It's local talk radio online at KFAR660.com. I won't bow down. Great. Even if the whole world thinks I'm crazy. Well, congratulations. I think they do. And this is Patriots the Men. <laughs> <laughs> Josh Bennett from uh, the uh, Bighorn Enterprises. Of course, the, the folks that have made this program, not just made this program possible, they've made this program, and that's what this is all about. Uh, they came to me and said, hey, Steve, we want to do this. And I'm like, yeah, I don't work on Saturdays. And they're like, well, okay, how about if we throw some money? Okay, I'm working. Uh, here comes the money. Here it goes. Uh, Steve goes off to work. Uh, and joining us also from uh, Foreign Note Tactical, Aaron Bennett, and uh, also Luke Lovejoy. Good morning, gentlemen. Which Luke is my partner in the store, so when they take me to jail for having a munitions store, make sure they take Luke too, please. Yeah. You know, we, I don't we, want to be alone. We were, <laughs> Bring oh, my you, friend. You won't be alone. We, we were talking in the last <laughs> hour about that <laughs> that Marine that was arrested. Actually, he was not. He was detained. detained. He was committed to a mental hospital for evaluation because of his Facebook posts. He has now been released. He's out of jail, uh, and and there, you know, obviously the, the, a lot of backpedaling. However, isn't that quite reminiscent of the Soviet Union? It is what did they exactly use? what the Soviet Union did. They, they they rounded up everybody who was against, who made any comment against the state, because obviously for you to make a comment against the state, you must be crazy. Yeah. You must be insane. We need to treat you. And of course, the second they start pumping chemicals into you, anybody who's been to a public school knows, you know, hey. The kids do much better when they're on Ritalin. <laughs> They'll sit there and quietly take in everything we pump at them. Now, we have, there's also another story about a, a, a veteran, actually, an Iraq war veteran, who, for I don't know why, he wore fatigues and some body armor and took a toy rifle. A uh, It was an airsoft. It was an AR, I think it was an AR-14 uh, airsoft mm-hmm. rifle, basically. It had the red tip and everything, so it looks like a toy and, and he was out there. He was out there jogging with these, and some people, some neighbors, got concerned, called the cops. Three cops with real guns took him down. Basically, said, "Drop the rifle, put it on the ground." He's like, "Whoa, whoa, whoa! This is a toy." That he got down on the ground. They arrested him. He's been charged with terrorism because he was out jogging, not only with a toy rifle, but with empty magazines, and he actually had ceramic plates inside that vest of his. He really was charged with terrorism. He was actually charged with terrorism. Yeah, but if you if you think about the intent behind it, 
he was out there jogging in full battle rattle, and he decided to carry an airsoft gun for the obvious reason, so he wouldn't end up going to jail. But they're not putting him in jail for any crime. It's for the intent. And the intent behind it was to um, get used to the gear that he had and do mm-hmm. some training of his own in all of his battle rattle for an eventual whatever. Well, maybe he's just staying in shape. I mean, the plates are heavy. It's just what's the difference doing that or throwing a backpack on and taking a jog? Because it's all it comes down to the perception of the ultimate arbitrator, which is the state. It's more comfortable than a backpack. You know, not right. that I would know. Have you ever worn one, Josh? They're really not comfortable. <laughs> I'm just going to throw it out there. Luke, you are should they comfortable? wear my backpack. Not so much. Now, basically, Luke and I have sold every body armor ever made pretty much under the sun. And I've, I've put them all on, just about every style out there, trying to find the one that best suits me. And, and I don't think any of them suit me then, because then, they suck. <laughs> that new stuff you have is a lot better than what I had when I was in Bosnia. I had, like, this full, I mean, giant vest that was ridiculously heavy. Right. Th- those are the PSG, PS. GTs or whatever, uh, those are actually much more comfortable, believe it or not. Oh, they're so heavy, though. They, I mean, well, they're heavy, but they're much more comfortable than the armor that's being well, issued We today. had to wear... They're not even close to as effective. But. We had to wear full battle rattle every time we went outside a building. So we had... If you wanted to go to the, use the John when we were in Bosnia, you had to suit up with the full battle rattle just to get from your barracks room to the john because of the so did you of, have to take that all off when you got in the john well only if you didn't want to pee on yourself yeah oh. i mean that's the, it's kind of the whole point is that it was ridiculously overprotective however when i got back from bosnia and yeah, i got out of shape you know in a new york minute and when i tried to when i started getting back into shape i did i i would load up my my old alice pack with as much gear as i possibly could make it as heavy over a hundred pounds of stuff i had in my backpack when i was out training with that that's some good training. That is some real good training. You will sweat. You will hurt. And if you can keep going through all that, then you'll be able to keep going through anything. And that was the whole point of the training. And if that, some guy is getting arrested for training, I, I you know, maybe it is time to, co- to, to throw in the, the towel on this show because it's time to start <laughs> bunkering up, brother. Yeah, that's exactly what he was trained to do, right? How did how did they get him into shape? They threw a bunch of weight on him, had him to carry a gun, and they said, go run. And so he ran, and now he's in jail. He really got... I didn't catch the part. He got charged with terrorism? For real. Oh, snap. William Everett Elamar taken into custody, uh, being held on $50,000 bail for the Designated Terrorist Act. Gosh. This is according to the Herald Mail. This is real life. Yeah, we should definitely keep doing this radio show. This is real life. I mean, this pe- is in Martinsburg, West Virginia. This, this is about what the happens. <laughs> this stuff happens <laughs> every job. single day. <laughs> Twenty thousand people a year in Virginia yeah. right now. Now that uh, the that's just Virginia. Clarification on the Virginia issue: that twenty thousand people a year they are detained for civil commitment and whisked away. Uh, there have been tw- twenty civil commitments in the past month alone. These are not just for Facebook. These are for any kind of civil commitments. Exact 20, same thing the Soviet Union did. They use the psychiatrist. They put you in there for mental evaluations, and then you went to the gulag. And all they have to do is just start medicating you, and they can turn you into a kind. I mean, look at the guy that they picked up for um, the Batman shootings. Maynard Campbell. The very second that they got him, they started pumping him full of drugs so that he was like a zombie when he was in court. Well, we promised those folks we'd pull them out. All right, let's see if there are any of them are still there. Good morning, caller. You still with us? Who's this? Is that me? It, it, it might be you. It depends on who it is. My name is Daniel. Daniel, go ahead. Um, I, uh, it, it, yeah, I almost lost my train of thought. I've been on hold for a while. Um, I kind of wanted to throw out a vocabulary lesson for you guys. Um, throughout this show, I've only been listening maybe for about 45 minutes to an hour, and I keep hearing from um, pretty much all the speakers on the show the word civil, um, civil rights, civil duty, being a civilian, this and that. Um. My vocabulary lesson is that I am not a civilian. I'm a citizen of the United States. And to be a civilian, that's a mindset, um, usually usually reserved for people in combative situations like, let's say, non-combatants in Iraq or, or civil non-combatants. Um, being civil is a state of mind. Um, when you go to make an arrest, you don't make a civilian's arrest. You make a citizen's arrest, okay? Um, just, just the fact that you guys use the word civil. Uh, it, it, Daniel, it, it, you, we don't. 
we don't <laughs> we don't we're use that word. We don't use we don't believe in civil rights. We don't believe in any of that well, kind of stuff. And, 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 but before you guys went to the break, you were talking about civil duty and this and that. I, I just hear the word. If you guys rewind your soul, you, you, you'll hear. I know. I said that I, I have he was read, quoting. He I was, was quoting, quoting people that were saying say it's this. your it's your civic duty. He didn't say civil. He said civic. It's your civic okay, duty to go out and vote, and that's and that's what you hear from people all the time. It's your civic duty. And I said yeah. I don't believe that. No, I, I understand, but I've, I've rarely heard you guys throw out the word citizen. Like I, I am a citizen of this country. I have rights afforded to me. You guys, you guys are advocating that we do have rights as members of this country and this and that. But I just wanted to con- no, no I never no. advocated that I had rights as ci- as a citizen of this country. Never. We so you're, so you're advocate not a citizen of the country. human rights. We advocate we have rights for the fact, the very fact that we're alive. I believe okay. that Muslims have the same rights that I do. What? Okay, so are Aren't you they not, brown? So, so are, they are, are, you brown. Saying, are, you, are you saying that you're not a citizen of the country? Give a definition. A citizen meaning that we we are members of this country and we are afforded the Constitution as the backing for our laws and for the way we get our... our basically, all I'm saying is that I'm a citizen of the United States. I'm not a civilian of the United States. I have the right to exercise my citizen right and not be civil. You know what I mean? Uh, you, yeah, you, you sure. Do, I, I so, got you. Just, so basically, um, are you saying yes, you're a citizen of the United States, or no, you're not a citizen why, of the United States? Why are you asking the question? Because I, I want an answer, basically. I, w- I would like to hear an answer that... um. Because Schaefer Cox is out there telling everybody straight up he's a sovereign citizen, not a citizen of the United States. He denounces U.S. citizenship. Um, I, that's basically what I'm trying to see... You want to see if, if Josh say, and Aaron I mean, are part citizen? of the sovereign citizen movement? No, no, no. I just hear them advocating a lot for the so- for the sovereign idea. So, are you guys sovereign citizens? Or are you citizens of the United States? For the sovereign idea, I don't even know what that means. I mean, sovereign citizen idea. We've denounced that and gone over it for months and months and months. We don't agree with that at all. We do believe, as John Jay, who was the father of the Constitution of the United States of America, that we are and ought to be the sovereigns of this nation. Uh, he wrote the Constitution. He was the first Supreme Court Chief Justice of the United States, and in uh, Georgia versus uh, Chisholm, Chisholm, that whole thing there was he claimed that the United States, the people that lived in the United in the states, little U, were in fact the sovereigns of the nation. So, so the you people were sovereign that? over the state, and the states collectively created the federal government. Is the ultimate decision that they so came is back that, to. So. Is that- is that basically to round it up? Is that a yes or a no to the question that I presented? You're asking about something totally different. You're talking about uniform commercial code and claiming uh, no, 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 sovereignty no, no, no. over the sovereignty. Yes, that's exactly what um, so Schaefer I Cox said, was are claiming. Are you a citizen of the United States or are you a sovereign citizen? Which one is it? Are you a citizen of the United wait, States? Wait, wait, why are you making there? Why there's, does there have to be a choice? Why are you giving us a, a this or a that? Uh, why? What are you trying to pigeonhole to label here, Daniel? Us like I, well, obviously. Cox. Uh, if you guys want me to answer that question, I will. But, I mean, I would like you guys to answer the question I posed as well. Because being as if you are a citizen of the United States, then, hey, you got your gun rights and, and you're not considered a terrorist. But if you denounce your U.S. citizenship, then you guys are criminals. I do not claim to be any part of we the just, sovereignty movement. We just that? talked about people that are not only U.S. citizens, but they were combat soldiers for the United States. And we just talked about guys that went to jail and are in jail. One of the, the, the that, that, jail right now. That, so. that, that veteran we just mentioned, he is in jail right now, being held in fifty thousand dollars So bond. what rights are you talking about that you're afforded as a U.S. Basically, citizen? Basically, if, if you guys go to another country, would you tell the other country members of that country that you're a citizen of the United States, or would you tell them that you're a sovereign above the United States? And I wouldn't you, tell them anything, brother. Yeah, I don't know. Well, See, I, it's, what? It's, it's, it's funny how you guys are. You guys are kind of just like. You guys are trying to travel around circles around the question. It's a simple yes or no question. Are you United That's because States the question that you're it asking is a bad is question. It is a question that is designed to... Basically, the kind of question you're asking right now is the kind of question that gets people into trouble. I was an interrogator in the U.S. Army. That is the kind of question that I would have been drummed out for asking because you never ask someone a direct yes or no question. You ask them an open-ended question. The correct question you should ask yourself is, or ask actually yourself and ask these guys is, how would you define your position vis-a-vis the United States government? And then it's open-ended, and they can describe it however they want to. When you're trying to pigeonhole them into a, a, a specific terminology, into a specific point of view, what you're trying to do is you're trying to classify them. You're trying to get them into the place to admit either that they are crazy, oh, gee, then they're going to have to be rounded up and treated for being crazy, no, or, or, not, or that they're criminals. You no, are not that, affording an either. You're affording a choice between being a criminal or being crazy. 
Where no. is the normal person in this question? I don't see it. There's, there's no such thing as normal, okay? Because, I mean, if the rest of the whole country, if the rest of the country goes and votes for Obama, and there, then five people out of the country doesn't vote for Obama, the five people are crazy and the rest of the country is normal. Normal doesn't exist. All right, well, I guess I can see that. But, I mean, I, I, I still don't understand why all the traveling around the question is. I mean, it's... Uh, it's a simple question. Yes, I am a U.S. citizen. I'm a citizen of the United States of America. Whether it's the United States of America in all capital well, letters, well, let me ask you this, Daniel. Same question. Same kind of thing. I just want to ask. I want to ask you a simple question. Yes or no? Have you stopped beating your wife? I'm not married. You didn't answer my question. Yes or no? Have you stopped beating your wife? That's a different. See, that's the kind of question that you were talking about would lead somebody into um, making. A category of themselves. Why are you going well, around the question, Daniel? Can you answer it, please? Yes or no? Have you stopped beating your wife? That's n that's not the kind of question I'm asking. You're not answering. Okay, you're not answering my question. I was born in a jurisdiction in the United States of America, and I reside in that area. All right. I guess that makes you a part of that corral. Thank you for the call, yes. and we're going to move on. Four five eight talk is a number. Good morning. This is the Patriots' lament. Who's this? Good morning, Trill. Trill, what's on your mind? And to go further on what George Washington said, before I carry on, George Washington stated that the word citizen is synonymous with the word subject. Ladies and gentlemen, that means they both mean the same thing. So, are you a citizen of the United States? What an oxymoron question. Are you a sovereign citizen? Another oxymoron. It can't be both. You're either a sovereign American or you're a slave. Right, a citizen is a subject. This is not a country, this is a corporation. State of Alaska is a corporation, the state of Alaska is a corporation. The United States is a federal corporation. You'll find that at Title 28, United States Code, Section 3002, Subsection 15. It is not a country. It has not been a country since 1871 when they incorporated. What does that mean, though, Trill? I mean, it is the fact that somebody filed some incorporation papers back there, does that somehow make you uh, a part of it? Does that somehow make you, uh, does it have some kind of magic power over you? It doesn't have any magic power over me. I am not a citizen of a federal corporation. I'm not a citizen of any. If you could be a citizen of the United States, you could be a citizen of Walmart <laughs> or Safeway or J.C. Penney's or some other corporation. The United States is not a country. The United States of America is founded in Title 18, Section 6, I believe it is. You can look it up. The United States of America is an agency of the United States. It is not a country. So, Steve, I really like you. I've gone from being you playing oxymoron songs when uh, you signed me off to now just signing me off. I really appreciate that. <laughs> well, you know what, Trill? I, I still think you're a little crazy, but I think what's happening now is that I'm becoming a little crazy, too. <laughs> so, <laughs> and thanks for the call. 458-TALK is the number. Good morning. This is Patriots Lament. Who's this? This is Winston. Winston, what's on your mind today? I'm just another member of the Lunatic Asylum. <laughs> uh, 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 I want to I want to thank uh, 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 Aaron uh, for the for the money that he spent. Uh, 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 this has been an enjoyable show, uh, or the show that he was sponsoring. Uh, uh, if he if he ceases to to do that, it'll 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 be a, a little empty place in the world. But. Uh, 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 the discussion that y'all fellers have stirred up over the last few uh, over the last months has been just uh, 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 an education for a lot of people. You've made people think, uh, 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 and it's it, it, it's it's a good thing to think. Uh, uh, and I, I just I just want to say I appreciate it. We appreciate we've appreciated your phone calls. I mean, for sure, you've had a lot of good insights and some. Funny ones too, especially every time I think about you, I have to think about writing in Mickey Mouse. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, um, 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 uh, I, I wasn't going to go there, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, the the voting thing that 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 bothers me more than uh, uh, how many people uh, this this next election on Tuesday there'll be approximately. I figure 30 percent of the people in the in the state of Alaska will go out uh, or that are qualified will go out and vote. Uh, so if you don't vote, uh, 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 you 
you're just joining the 70% to accept the status quo. Uh, the, 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 the political people that are, are, are just real wound up on, on politics, they expect you to vote for one or the other of the two people that are elected. What they can't stand is somebody coming in there and voting for Mickey Mouse or one of the above or because you're denying them their uh, mandate. Uh, you, you're denying them their mandate. They, they, they've they got to get uh, uh, your vote one way or the other. Uh, because either, either one of them you vote for, you're voting for the same government. Yeah, but it's if like you vote it's for like the, somebody besides the government. It's like another uh, bad question. You're giving somebody a, a a bad choice between a flawed answer here or a flawed answer there. Either way, you answer the question: Who are you going to vote for? It's exactly. And right. you know we talked okay, about so it last if you, week. Uh, if you if you vote an honest answer, say I none of the above, uh, 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 you let them know uh, uh, right offhand that you're not under control. No, that's a I'm, yeah, that's a good point. I kind of falling back to what we talked about last week. It was on uh, Lou Rock. What well, actually posted on the right, blog, right, I think, right. was the the thing with uh, by not voting. I mean, every government gets their legitimacy. Whether well, they're not all legitimate. Well, none of them are. Hmm. None well, of them. Anyways, <laughs> but part of the legitimacy of in the mindset of Americans are the government governs by consent. And by not consenting even a little bit, it, it tears away that little bit of, I don't know, whatever they have in their mind. It takes that away just a little bit. Every person that doesn't give consent in their vote, because when you're voting, I really do think you're giving consent of whoever, whatever comes out in the end, I agree to. And taking a little bit of that consent away takes a little bit of their legitimacy away. And more and more and more, it comes down to their, their governing without Consent. Right, but like I say, seventy uh, 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 percent of the of the people won't vote next Tuesday. Yeah. Uh, uh, and so their consent uh, to what, however it turns out. How do we get uh, the other thirty percent to not vote? Then we have something. <laughs> uh, 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 but what I'm getting at is, is, is if you go in there and you don't vote for either one of the candidates, if you can't stomach either one of the candidates. Right, and you vote in. for uh, uh, for Mickey Mouse or something. Else. That is an honest, a uh, 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 non-consent. I'm not consenting to, to to either one of these people. Uh, 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 like I say, otherwise you just fall into the uh, into the status quo of, of the people that are well. Do whatever you're going to do. I ain't part of. It. Well, there are a lot of people that don't vote just because they're I don't know they're apathetic. They're just out there like well, uh, I mean they wouldn't be able. The difference that between someone that's like that or someone like myself is that I do know what's going on. I right, don't right. agree with it. I don't give my consent to it. To where you're right, most of the people that don't vote, the whole reason is because they're apathetic. They have, they're just whatever happens, happens, man. Just give me my welfare check or whatever. You know, I think that's a really good point. Thank you very much, Winston, for the phone call. That this issue of you, you know you're asking people about is in the last hour is liberty important enough? As long as people are getting fed, and as long as people are getting entertained, if you think about how many people do you know, and how many we talked about last week, Aaron, how many hours people spend watching television, just letting their minds go. What, what did no I say it was? I, At least five hours a day. Yeah, it was just under five hours a day the average American spends watching TV, and they, that was a nationwide census that, census make, that they took. Does that make you think? When you watch TV? No, I don't watch TV. So, I mean, like I said, I'm a little bit guilty. I do play games, but anytime I was gonna, I'm gonna watch TV. I tell myself I should be reading, and I just go do that instead. But I suppose that um, TV does things for you. It numbs you. Oh, there you go. It's it's like the opiate for the masses, right there. All right, we got about a minute here before the break. You want to take one last call before we go? Sure. All right, 458-TALK is the number. Good morning. Welcome to Patriots Lament. Who's this? Good morning. It's Cecily. Hi, Cecily. Yeah, I, I wake up on purpose on Saturday so I could hear you guys on account of I've been ridiculed and told I was naive and all these things about my opinions on the government and and the bullies. And uh, when I 
glad to hear you were speaking. It was a uh, it was very nice to have a representation in certain areas, and so I hope that uh, that um, monetary isn't the only legacy that you that you uh, want to leave this world because this show right here is a pretty good uh, thing to leave behind and. It's way uh, more valuable than any money that you're going to make. And uh, thank you very much. And uh, as far as voting, um, yay, don't vote. <laughs> Maybe they'll get the message. Anyway, no burrow, no burrow. No burrow. Thank you for that. I actually saw a bumper sticker that said that the other day. No burrow. No burrow. All right. We're uh, listening to Patriots Lament right here on KFAR online at KFAR660.com. Fox News at the bottom of the hour. And then right back into it. If you'd like to call and get in hold, the number is 458-TALK, 458-8255. And welcome back to Patriots Lament right here on KFAR. It's local talk radio, but we are streaming live around the world at KFAR660.com. I'm Steve Floyd, the monkey behind the machine. Joining us in the studio, The Real Show, from Far North Tactical, Aaron Bennett, and from Bighorn Enterprises, Josh Bennett. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. Where, where do you go from here? I mean, you, you've got people calling you and saying, hey, keep doing what you're doing. Uh, but at the same time, you've got people on the other side that are just incensed about the idea of voting or, or the, that you would advocate for not voting. I don't know. I'm trying to get over the song we just listened to. I love that thing. You have got such a case of ADD. Never ever dreaming that a scheming sheriff and his posse was a watching them and gathering around. Sorry. I really think people ought to uh, watch the Walt Disney Robin Hood. It's fantastic. There's a lot of liberty themed messages in there. Well, Robin Hood, didn't he? I mean, he stole from the rich and gave right. to the poor, right? Or, in fact, didn't he steal from those who had stolen? Aha. And gave it back to the people that rightfully... Hmm. It's like Atlas Shrugged. And the people that have read that book, then you'll you'll get the uh, the references to Ragnar. The, the private the, 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 the Exactly. If you haven't read the book, go out and read it. I mean, it does take a little while. It takes a little commitment of time to, and effort to read it because it is a long book. Uh, but And it's not like sitting down and watching the, the movie version of the TV. <laughs> but, but Ragnar was a pirate, a privateer. He was out there raiding the government ships that was taking the gold away from the United States and basically oh, they sunk the ships, recover the gold, and then giving it back to the people that it had been taken from, the industrialists, the people who made the country. No, no, never mind. I was just going to say, they didn't make that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they had help. Right. Yeah. Interesting theory. Huh. Huh. Well, I mean, I had something. I'm, never mind. I just got a text from a guy that said that um, if we can get people to help out with the show, then we can say brought to you. Uh, how did he say? <laughs> brought to you by nuts for nuts or something like that. <laughs> that was pretty funny. Brought to you by nuts for the nuts jobs. The uh, Atlas Shrug. That's what I was gonna say. If you guys have not read. Whatever happened to justice yet? Please get off your tushy, go get the book. I mean, we have it. We've even given it out for free. Aaron's got some at his store. I'm out right this minute, but people are supposedly going to return them. I I buy about 20 at a time, and people take them. And then you're out right I now. I tell them to yeah, I ask people to return them, but I get about a one percent return. That's because they're giving them to their other friends. Right. Well, we'll make sure that there's some more down there. But please, read the book. If if you would read that book and then call in, call in <laughs> we'd have a lot better discussion. If, at least, at the very least, you would understand where we're coming from right off the bat. Instead of like, what are you guys talking about? Aaron gets that a lot because he interacts with people more than I do. But they, uh, they people, come in and say, we don't, what are you talking about? Right, right, right. And he gives them the book and they come back and they say, wow. Okay, now I get it. Now I understand what you mean at least. And then you can have a little bit of discussion, because we pretty much know where the other people are coming from. So read a good book. It's really short, and it's easy to comprehend. Read it, gain a little knowledge, actually gain a little wisdom, and 
call a show. One of the best books I've ever read in my life was Discovery of Freedom by Rose Wilder Lane. I think that was probably one of the best books I've ever read. What was it? Discovery of Freedom. Why are you Rose whispering? Talk Our, louder. Yeah. Discovery of Freedom by Rose Wilder Lane. <laughs> Another good book. Also, we have uh, For New Liberty. Another excellent book. If you'd like to understand what we're talking about a little bit more, we'll give that away free at Aaron's store. For New Liberty, Murray Rothbard, Austrian economic, ec- Austrian economist, uh, anarcho-capitalist, Mr. Libertarian. If you want to understand what we're talking about, pick that book up. At least stretch your mind out a little you bit. Keep using these strange words like arachno-capitalist. What is that, a spider? Then stretch out your mind. That's all we've been asking. Just... <laughs> Come out of the box and stretch your mind out. But we are bit. not trained to stretch our mind. It, it, we are trained to stunt our thinking. We are trained to accept what we are told. Look at it. From the minute you enter elementary school until the second I you think, graduate from college. I think more than anything else, especially in this day and age, we're trained to see everything as being relative. Yeah. There is no truth. There is no ultimate anything. It, it's all, well, that's your... Which is so funny. I mean, it's that's like your the, perspective. In the first hour there we talked about being on an elementary playground and everything's not relative it's so in your face that there's stark truths and there is absolutes now again you you, you, you look at I, I, now you're going to get some phone calls or emails if, if, if you're thinking about somehow making an application to a, a higher truth like with a capital T, and now you're just going down that religious road, turning people off again. Right? No, I don't think I went down a religious road at all when I pointed out that it's so obvious to see when you set a body above you that um, is the arbitrator in all of their own disputes and the decider of what is law. They get to create what the rules are, uh, and above and beyond that, they get to decide what they're going to charge to make those rules and to enforce those rules, and so on and so forth. Those things, Those things are pretty absolutes. There's no twisting them up and saying they're any other way. It, it is what it is. And change the rules as you go to make right. sure that you're on top and win every single time. So when you're in a, in a when law becomes fluid, how can you demand any kind of justice? I mean that's that's basically what I've been saying for two and a half years. Is you know when I first started coming on hanging out with Steve, all I talked about was how is there any freedom under regulatory law? I mean I started out slow. And it wasn't until I started coming on here with Josh, we started to ramp it up into a deeper thought. But, you know, you start out by pointing out, hey, if every aspect of your life is regulated, if everything is regulatory law, where, I mean, where is there any justice in that? And if the state's the ultimate um, uh, injured party in every single dispute, and they're the third party in every dispute, where is there any justice in that? Where is there any liberty in that? And, you know, in, in two and a half for almost three years, or however long it's been, uh, not one person's ever been able to take us up on the simplest of challenges, and that was to call in and tell us what law has been passed that made us more free. And yet we sit there and we vote people in to create laws to make us more free. But nobody can tell us what that law is. Can you, Luke? Nope. What law has ever made us more free? What do lawmakers do? Make laws. What do people do that you vote for? I don't see laws. I don't see anything relative in any of those things. I mean, in going down, in, in we break down property rights and everything else. Can Luke and I occupy the same space at the same time without there being some kind of dispute? Of course, there can't be. There, there's a defined boundary of what property is, and it comes from the original appropriation. I mean, um, we've never touched on this subject, but you take the the Native Americans, the people. That's a touch, touchy subject for anybody to talk about. But can uh, a person that was first here in this land look around him and say, I own everything that I see? Is that realistic? Is that the original appropriation of land? Can he claim ownership over something that he hasn't done anything with? Just because I can see it, it's mine? That's what Abraham did. So behind him comes these um, white men that settle down and take portions of land that they can manage for themselves and they appropriate that land and then later on the Indian comes back and says hey I own that land because I could see it who is who is the rightful property owner there 
That's the king. Mm-hmm. Right, the, the <laughs> government, the state. The king who never even saw the land and simply declared it when he saw the map. This is mine! I'm going to you know, give it to you. Right, I mean, but you, so if you, you, manage it if you put it into the island ideology where Luke and I are sitting on this island and one of us can have one half and one can have the other, and he builds up his size and mm-hmm. makes it nice and I lay around and eat coconuts all the time, <laughs> and I decide to go appropriate his side just because I can see it, does it become mine? No, it's his because of... because be, It's theft. If you go and you try to take something that's not yours... Well, how did it become his? That's the question. That's the underlying question, is how is it Luke's? How can he lay claim to something that is property? I, I Think about it if you're going camping, too. I mean, if you go out there, you don't own the land just because you set up a tent on it. But once you start making improvements to the land, I think that's the issue, isn't it? The improvements, the the effort, the work that you put into it, when you actually you take the raw materials and turn it into something that it wasn't before. You have a couple of logs laying there. They're just a couple of logs. You put them together into a shelter. Now you've built a house. And now that house has value. Whereas before it was just a couple of logs lying there. A good example of that would be the range wars that happened between the cattle barons and the um, the much, much smaller uh, farmers and sheep herders and whatnot. And the cattle barons laid claim to millions and millions of acres so they could obviously move their herds and uh, raise whatever area they were at and move on to the next one. But they wanted to claim all of that for the obvious reasons. And you had um, farmers come in and make farms and start fencing off their areas. And they claimed right to it because of, not because of originally having walked through it, but because of the improvement and the appropriation of it. Now, ultimately, who won in court in the range wars? I have no After idea. they got done killing each other. <laughs> the cattle barons didn't. Right. You know, the cattle barons came and took it from the Indians because it said the Indians couldn't own it because they're just claiming what the eye could see and not because they actually appropriated any of it. And then they cried cried out and fought back when the uh, ranchers came right behind them and did that to them. But did the ranchers ever get removed? No. Farmers. The farmers. Well, you know, yeah. There we go. The farmers. The farmers still to this day have right to what they claimed. So you have to define what property is. It's the appropriation of it. So on Luke's side of the island, I can't come over and claim it. But then we get into the issue of what government does. So if I set up a government, I decide to start taxing all of Luke's coconuts to protect his side of the property. Then you're expropriating. Hmm. I still think that's stealing. Yeah. Yeah. We don't got enough time, Dan. I want to talk about monopolies, but maybe we'll wait for another day. Basically, I want yeah. The borough wants to set up a utility, right? The oh, no. gas utility. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Man, we've got to hit that sometime. What's the, what's the you know, it's great uh, historical success rate, right, for government-owned monopolies on utility? Oh, yeah. It's at a 100% rate of... Failure. Oh, exactly. 100%. Here's the funniest part is that... Um, Philosophers and economists both agree on one thing, um, absolutely agree that monopolies are bad. They're bad all the way around. But both philosophers and economists in America both say that we need government, which is the ultimate monopoly. Yeah, we need some time to hit that one. All right, it's, yeah. Let's ready take to the phone take calls some calls. 458 there. Talk is a number. Good morning. Welcome to Patriots. The Mantu is this. Here's Bill. Hey, uh, the thing is, is there's groups of people that want the United States to go communist. Uh, but the thing, too, also, in, uh, the, in Russia, if you own property in Russia, it's your property. And that property, because you paid for it, uh, it, it is not taxed. They do not tax your property. Uh, it stays in the family, it stays in the name, and it could be transferred down uh, from uh, one family member to another all the way for eternity. They, to still to this day, they do not tax you in Russia uh, for your property. So once you purchase it, it's yours. It's the same in and China. They don't tax the exactly. citizens' original home, their that's property they that they live. They don't. If they go buy a pleasure place or whatever, you know, uh, 
recreational property, then they're taxed on the recreational property, but their own land in communist freaking China is not taxed. Exactly, and I think that's what they want to do here. They, the people that are run, that are uh, uh, wanting this country to go communism, that's why, that's one of the reasons why. And the other reason is, is that the government owns everything. I mean, it owns everything. The utilities, the uh, uh, the housing, well, not the, I mean, you once you build the house, you build it, but you have to work for the government. You have to go, they'll tell, they'll come by, They'll, they'll put you in the school, your school free, your medical free, all that stuff is free. They tell you where to work. You work a three-day week, and you give one to the government. So you, you work four days, you get paid for three, and one of those days is the government. Uh, and then if you really, if you're a real good person and you want to be lock, stop, and barrel with the government, you work another extra day. You know, isn't that kind of the same way it is now? I mean, how many days is it that, that you actually end up working for the government before Tax Freedom Day, John? Somewhere into June. So, I mean, it's up. I mean, it used to be it was around Tax Day in April, but now it is almost it is half half your year. You work just to pay the taxes that the government requires of you. Thanks for the call, Bill. That's freedom, baby. Four five eight talk is the number. Good morning. Who's this? Good morning. Hey, who is this? It's Gordon. Gordon, go ahead. Well, I thought I'd call in and say that you guys are rapidly making converts to be irrelevant. And if I've ever heard a group of guys sit around and practice how to be irrelevant, let your neighbor do it, let the other guy do it. I want to just sit and criticize. Aren't you the one that's voted for the Republican Party for the last 50 years? Eh, I would... uh, be proud if if I could say yes, but no, for the last 40. 40. 40 so and how much of a difference have you made, Gordon, by all that voting? Quite a bit, actually. I was... Uh, so we can thank you for the Patriot Act? No, you can thank me for being on the committee that helped reform workers' comps so there'd be jobs here. Help, helping to correct a thousand little things that I contributed to. I didn't agree with the candidates 100%, but I supported the ones that I thought would make a difference and the ones that were open to have a conversation with. We're still still paying uh, workman's comp. What? We're still paying workman's comp quite a bit. Did you think you could just stop paying workers' comp? Why does the state make me pay workers' comp? Because... Somebody has to be responsible. What gives the state the right to steal my money to put into a little fund and say, okay, you have to do this? Why is the state a third party in my business? You don't have to. You can run your business, just don't have any common law employees. Right. Don't have any employees. You want the right to have employees. Does the state want people to work? Well, of course they do. Then why do they find me for having people work for me? You want to sit idly by... And criticize. You know, a 55-gallon drum makes a lot of noise. A full one doesn't make that much. You guys are like a 55-gallon drum. You beat on a few things, and you sound loud, but you do nothing. How do you know? What do you What do you know about what I do? Since you started. What do you know about what I do? I know what you do. You vote, and that has done nothing but give us a uh, twenty trillion dollars in debt and two hundred to maybe a hundred trillion dollars in uh, you know. unfunded mandates. Uh, yeah, we definitely comp. don't want to run down the list of what we expend of our oh, own personal no. property, life, time, you don't money, pay. wealth, everything in the, in the name of liberty. I could go on for about five hours about how much you. of my life was de- is devoted to this, and this radio show is Your the whole- smallest part of it. Your whole life is devoted to being totally irrelevant so that you can criticize the people who try to make Right, because voting makes you totally relevant. No, it doesn't. It just makes me part of the solution. It makes you part of the problem, actually. In actually, fact, you it's... are the problem. Uh-huh. You are uh, like a leech. You, you a leech? Your... Do you know how much money I spend Kennedy. in taxes every year, bud? I bet it's a lot more than you do. Don't call me a leech. Why? How am I a leech? 
Well, you got people around you, your neighbors, and they're trying to make things better. And you, they're said, trying to make things better off of his here. money. I they're the leeches. Yeah, and that's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. When the it, it, appropriation of his taxes is the leech. Go- wait, wait, Gordon, do you know how to read? Oh yeah. Have you read Atlas Shrugged? Long before you were born. All right, then how are you any different from any of the leeches in that book that are telling the people that are being taxed to death that they're not giving enough? I'm trying to slow down the tax to death thing and trying to help make things better. How is that slowing down going for you you when we just talked about having to go till June to even start making money for yourself? Things haven't gotten better. You can't come on here and make a claim that you've been making an, an effectual change towards betterness when everything's gotten worse. That's like Obama coming out and saying that he's done what he said he was going to do. You know, it's a sad thing to live Just because he says it doesn't make it true. You really want the privilege of living here and being protected, and yet you want to run around and say... I've never asked anyone to be my protector. Why, everybody is your protector because left to your No, own. everyone's not my protector. The government's my you, protector. It's forced gone. protection. I would be long gone. Why? Would you want to kill me? No, because you have this. My neighbors want to kill me? It's bigger Here's than yours. And everybody knows somebody that's got a bigger gun than you. So it's your whole. <laughs> I don't know about that. Oh, John, he's got a pretty big gun, Jordan. I don't know if you've seen it. <laughs> All right. Yeah, yeah, you're you're mixing government though with neighbors. I we have we're, that's what we're all about is neighbors taking care of each other. Oh, you're not. Yes, Actually, we are. We are absolutely really about that. We talk about neighbors, neighbors going together and helping each other and not killing each other or using the state gun to point at people to steal from them and get what they want by using the state instead of stealing on their own. We're absolutely all for neighbors. We're for community. You have neighbors that are trying to make things better, and all you want to do is stand around and criticize them because they go down and vote and they try to help to make things better. We are trying to ask, to point out the obvious, what good is voting done? Is there a better way that we could do something besides just going and bowing with a vote? Well, according to you... It would be insurrection, and that has not proven to be the better I do, way. How, you claim to listen to the show, Gordon. I believe that every single week these two gentlemen have said that insurrection, armed insurrection, is not the way. So you keep putting words in their mouth, so I don't know what you're listening to. Maybe it's the voices in your head. Yeah, I, I especially don't agree with any kind of um, violent overthrow of any kind, because I see, on, I see on the other side of that. I don't, I don't see you with a violent overthrow. I see you with a, I want to sit back, make critical remarks, and benefit from the efforts of my neighbors. Do you know what I see from the guys that come what? into my story, store every single day? I see guys that come in there by the hundreds. I have a huge customer base. They come in there, and they talk about the same kind of political solutions that you do as they're arming themselves and talking about when this all comes down. Where is your solution there? My solution Americans is have an ideology of that there's a destructive means to the ends of this political process that they're a part of. I don't see anything in that but death and destruction, and I want no part of it. Well, I'm sorry, but you can sit by, and what you really should do is be a little more tolerant of the people that try to make a difference. In this town, we have people like Natalie Howard and Mike, and they get out and do something to try. You sit back and whine and cry and take advantage of what your neighbors produce. Actually, you know, that's 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 several times you said that I steal from my neighbor, and that's actually a very invalid accusation. I get stolen from from my neighbor, and just because someone goes down and votes, what is that voting doing? They're voting for someone to steal more from me. And you want to evoke Natalie Howard's name? Natalie, call in. Have, Natalie, if you're out there listening, call into the show you're and tell so us where we're so not doing anything and that uh, we're so shallow. We're so shallow. Right? Yeah, you, you, that we don't want people to steal from other people. We don't want people to use violence. Can you add her to the call? Drum is empty. I'm going to see here. But substance in that empty drum anymore. All right, Natalie, do we have you on the line? Totally irrelevant. Go ahead, Natalie. Take care. Thanks for listening. 
They're here and enjoying the program. Hang on a second. We've just dropped Gordon, and we're just going to go ahead. And, oh, did we drop Natalie? Oh, we dropped her, too. Natalie, I'm so sorry. Call back. Call back. we got uh, oh, two oh, minutes. Oh, here we go. Oh. Natalie Howard. Uh, hello? Yes. We finally got oh, you. Go okay. ahead. Yeah, no, I just I wanted to call in because I, I, I do know uh, Gordon, and um, I respect both people's opinions because I think that what the Bennetts are doing is a, is a wonderful thing to get people thinking about solutions. There's a lot of different ways to work hard and make changes in your community, and what I've chosen to do is just one way of millions. I can't tell anybody what they should be doing as individuals, and they all have their own way. Yeah, and we're only asking people. We're not telling anyone to do anything. We're asking people to look at a different idea. That's all. Look at a different and, idea. So, and I think that the, I, I agree with many of the ideas that you're throwing out there, and it's really thought-provoking, like I said. My parents are visiting right now from the States, and we've been listening to your show, and, and all morning, you know, we're saying this is their thought-provoking comments. Um, the discussion is really good, and I think that everybody needs to have these types of discussions because what we could be facing is something we're going to need new ideas for and, and to understand ourselves as human beings better. So when somebody calls out and, and tries to invalidate somebody like the Bennetts because they're, quote, not doing something because they're not involved in the political process, mm-hmm. what doesn't that really, I mean, you talked about how there are millions of options out there, millions of things that people be, could be doing. It forces people into a false dichotomy, makes people feel not like they're as worth as much because they're not politicians. No, and there's not only one way, and, and what I've learned is that I've spent a long time being involved in, in the political process. And for, for me, um, I need to get out, and there are a lot of different things I could do, like what the Bennetts are doing on the radio program, is just getting people to think, asking people to think a little bit harder about it and stop fighting with each other on wanting to control each other. That, that's what I see that really bothers me, is that, what our government has turned into is, is a, a means of people controlling each other or trying to control each other. And and that's why I, I called in because I don't like it. I personally don't like, like it or enjoy it when people try to do that even on a thought level. You know, everybody has their way of doing things. And we should be a lot more respective of each other's ways, especially when we're talking about ideas and solutions, which we're going to be needing. Yeah, and it's just... Um when we talk about voting and stuff, that's our personal belief. Mm-hmm. So, and so why attack someone for something that they have as a personal belief? We personally believe the political process is evil and that it's immoral and it's unethical. So we choose not to participate in it. We're only pointing out why we think that and ask that you contemplate it yourself. That's all. Natalie, yeah, thanks. And, and, I, and I appreciate I, I know a lot of people have done a lot of work within the political arena in the last how many years, decades. And I really appreciate that, too, because that still gets the message out and does promote some thought process. Natalie, we're out of time. Thanks very much. Check us out online, patriotsthemen.blogspot.com.